My question involves deplatforming and um, freedom of speech. Have you heard of a fellow called Mike Masnick? No. Okay. I hadn't heard of him until a few days ago when I saw, um, I think it was on YouTube, an interview he did with Nick Gillespie from Reason Magazine. Yeah. Now, Mike Masnick, about over 20 years ago, created a blog called Tech Dirt. And he found he's founder and CEO of the Copia Institute. His interests are tech, uh, technology, um, and particularly as it relates to freedom of speech, mm -hmm. um, privacy, uh, and, uh, and, and and business issues and legal issues uh, confronting okay. technology. Okay. Uh, Happily, he seems to be on the right track, and I, I, I don't know what he knows about objectivism, but what I heard was good. He's, um, he won't, he, when he uses the word censorship, he means he limits it to government no, control. Good. No, good. Oh, yeah. So good. that's refreshing yep. right off the bat. Um, and, um, and he very much supports Section 230 uh, in fact, he advocates expanding it to provide better protection for intellectual property rights, better than the um, Digital Millennial Millennium Copyright Act does. Okay. So he seems to be really on the right track. Now, here's where I get to my question. I've heard you advocate that, or re that platforms formally publish their standards and their criteria so that users would know Oh, this I better not do. Now, he took a different position. He said that the um, practices that the different platforms follow, the decisions they make when they moderate their content, the content um, is very much context specific. Mm -hmm. He thought it was impossible to actually come out with rules that wouldn't have to keep changing based on the specific. And I thought, well, that sounded legitimate, sensible. Yeah. But I also yeah. thought that it might be possible to state their rules in terms of principles that would not have to be changed, rather than make them very specific. You may not say this, but you, you may not say anything that would, in our sole judgment, cause such and such, for yeah. example. Um, now, he's actually taken this. So I want, I'd like, part A is, I'd like your opinion of that. Part B is, he wrote a, uh, an article in 2019 for the Knight First Amendment Institute at Columbia University. And it's titled um, Protocols, Not Platforms, A Technological Approach to Free Speech. I haven't read it yet, and I guess you haven't either because you weren't familiar with him. I can send you a link to the article because yep, I'd be interested. In, yeah, I'll email it to you. I'd be interested in hearing what you think because um, it sounds like he's taking it to another step, you know, to trying to find a solution when solutions are tough. Everyone, I mean, every good person agrees that the government has no role to play. Yep. But it doesn't mean it's still easy. So. I'll shut up now and let you comment. So I think the important thing to note here is that it, whatever the solution is, it's very difficult to get to. And, and I have a lot of sympathy for Facebook and for Twitter and for others who are trying to figure out what the balance is. Now, I think they're biased and I think they, they, they ignore their bias because they live in a bubble uh, where they, they don't know um, that not everybody thinks like they do. But no matter what uh, philosophical perspective you have, to try to write up a code that is objective is going to be hard. And I don't have the solution of what it is. And it would have to be a series of principles that could then be adapted to various contexts. So there's no question that a lot of what you say, its meaning is con contextual and whether it violates the terms of service is contextual or not. So, uh, so that is all. That is all. I think absolutely right. But I don't think that precludes being able to have 
a, um, a set of principles that can guide you. And it's important for a content creator to know, well, what is crossing the line with these guys? What can I say? What can't I say? What can I do? What can't I do? You know, uh, I, I, we talk about the importance of having objective laws. And I think the same thing is true here. Less so, of course, laws are more important because the government can actually use force against you. But just from a business perspective, it's, it's crucial in order to keep your clientele to have clear rules, clear guidelines, clear principles that allow you to determine. But it's hard. So I was on a call the other day with, um, it was a private call. So I'm not going to tell you exactly who it was, but uh, two people on the call were people responsible for content curation at two of the largest um, social media platforms in the world. And, you know, they were, I'd say both of them were probably mildly left of center. They, they weren't rabid progressives. They, uh, one of them said she used to be a Republican and she's not anymore, but she's not a wacko either. Um, and the thing that came across from having just a discussion with them is that they are really struggling with how to do this and how to do it right. And what constitutes uh, inciting, what constitutes, now put aside the legal definition, but what constitutes for their purposes, inciting what constitutes uh, the kind of speech they don't want on their platform. And, and they are struggling. They don't know. Uh, I think that's true of Zuckerberg. I think that's true of, uh, I mean, if I don't know if you saw the internal memos at Twitter around whether to take Trump off the platform or not. And there was massive disagreement about whether to do it or not. The CEO, I forget his name, the CEO didn't want to take Trump off. He wanted to keep Trump on. And his people argued that he should be taken off. And there's a whole exchange. And then he does a whole stream on Twitter to try to explain why they did it, why he accepted his staff overruling him in a sense. These are difficult decisions from a business perspective, difficult decisions to make and try to stay consistent. I don't think they do necessarily a good job at it, but I appreciate the difficulty that they face in doing it. And I think Republicans and some objectivists and, and many libertarians are way too dismissive. Oh, they should just allow all speech on. I remember when Jordan Peterson was trying to create his own platform about a year ago before he got sick. He was trying to create a competitor to Facebook. And um, I heard this from uh, Dave Rubin, I think. And Dave was telling me that the real challenge that they were facing was not technical. It wasn't even marketing. The real challenge they were facing is how to create terms of service that would allow a maximum of speech, but wouldn't allow everybody. They don't want everybody. They don't want all speech because some speech would make the platform non-desirable to be on. For example, pornographic speech, right? People just wouldn't want to be on. So how do you set the guidelines? How do you set the limits is not an easy problem. And people are way too quick to criticize and to make fun of and to trivialize what's involved here. And I think Paula's struggles are part of their you know, difficulty in figuring out exactly what is and isn't appropriate to have on their platform. And I think, I think they would admit that some of the stuff that landed up on the platform shouldn't have been there. Um, and then the question is, how do you police that? So this is a very complicated issue that one of the beauties of markets is that different players do it differently and over time, and maybe it takes a decade, the market kind of figures out, motivates the right set, the set that actually is, has stable and is workable. And part of that is different companies have different standards and push and pull and all of that that happens in a marketplace. Now, the problem we face today is that government is involved and that's what distorts and perverts the whole thing. But if just markets were working on this problem, we would solve it. Given the government's involved, that's where it gets challenging. Yeah. Okay, thanks Roy. Okay. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think. 
meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>